Hello and welcome to one of our uh, weird uh, theoretical uh, approaches that we sometimes do on this channel. It's not that often, but when it is, when it's happening, it's uh, bound to be like a uh, weird convoluted set of uh, things that mainly get you so tired that you want to uh, close the video within like 20 seconds. Probably I'm already doing this. But uh, yeah, as you've seen in the uh, intro and probably judging by the title itself, you are here because you want to do a little bit more research on those nasty harmonics, right? So uh, before we go into any um, discussion about the harmonics per se, I want to advise you that if you have a uh, sort of guitar like this one, which is an electric, uh, you should almost always uh, try to use the bridge pickup when dealing with, uh, you know, harmonics. Uh, if you're playing the uh, classical or acoustic guitar, obviously you don't have to worry about such uh, minute details, however, because of the nature of the positions uh, of these two or sometimes uh, you know three or more pickups on on the guitar the uh, position of the bridge pickup is in uh, such a way uh, it's, it's designed to, to be like in such a way so that it captures a lot of the high frequencies which are obviously uh, predominant within uh, the uh, harmonics that we will uh, proceed and show throughout this lesson. So, uh, if you find it hard to, uh, you know, obtain harmonics on the uh, neck pickup, uh, probably that's one of the first reasons why you don't really get all the uh, harmonics that you want because you're using this pickup. Uh, try to switch to the bridge pickup. Now, on to the actual harmonics. So, the harmonics on the guitar, and let me just switch here to a more distorted sound. The harmonics on the guitar are of several natures. Uh, when you browse online, people will say things like, you know, oh, uh, harmonics are of multiple types. There are pinch harmonics, there are uh, natural harmonics, tap harmonics, and, you know, whatever uh, other sort of combination actually from a physical standpoint there's only one type of uh, harmonic and I need to explain to you why see now the the thing is that whenever you play a string whether it's open like this or uh, I don't know you're fretting uh, a note uh, by actually you know shortening the uh, the uh, actual length of the string whenever you're playing uh, non harmonic uh, induced you know notes whether it's again open uh, open strings or fretted notes basically whatever the string uh, whatever the, the actual string length is, whether it's the full one with an open string and whether it's uh, you know, a shortened one with a fretted note, in reality what happens is that the piece of string that travels from one end to the other uh, vibrates in a full oscillation uh, pattern, if you will. Now, I'm not gonna go extremely, uh, you know, physical and mathematical and you know uh, all that sort of stuff but it's going to get a little bit technical if you really wish to understand some of these phenomena so uh, again when you're playing normally the whole string is oscillating however I mean it's it's oscillating uh, in a full oscillation pattern you only have like one oscillation from one end to the other, right? It's uh, vibrating in this, uh, you know, uh, like eight, like uh, or infinity, like uh, shape. 
uh, it has bells uh, forming in and out. However, whenever you bump into a harmonic, whether it's again pinched, natural, tapped, whatever, because it's all the same, you'll see immediately. What happens is you're basically creating a multiple, an integer multiple that is, of, um, you know, of uh, actual periods, uh, of actual uh, wavelengths, if you will. I'm going to purposely not be 100% uh, correct with the uh, terminology, but I want to keep it like in a bit of a layman's term fashion. So what happens is that whenever you uh, have a harmonic, for example, let's say initially you're playing the open G string and then uh, you are uh, going for the natural, so-called natural harmonic of the, uh, of the same string, you would uh, basically go at the 12th fret, for example, and you would just gently tap it uh, without actually fretting it. So you would create the equivalent sound of one octave higher than the open string. Now, obviously, in this case, whether I'm fretting it or not, uh, it is the same situation because of the actual coincidence of having uh, the uh, remaining of the string be exactly one half. However, when I'm actually tapping it and creating the uh, natural harmonic, what happens is that the string begins to oscillate being broken down into a symmetric uh, pattern of the same thing that was happening when you were just banging on the open string. So, if you had a pattern, again, feel free to uh, search on uh, Google or whatever, or I'll just put something on the screen right now so that you see uh, what's really happening and how it's actually oscillating. Um, whatever pattern you have on the open string, for example, once you reach the 12th fret, which is exactly the half of the open string in terms of distance, that same pattern actually uh, happens itself. And you have one half to the left of it and one half to the right of it. Now, remember I told you that you can do this with any integer multiple. So, that means you can split the length of the string within two identi uh, identical parts, uh, three, four, five, six, ten, twenty, whatever. It's an infinite number. So uh, let's say theoretically there are an infinite number of uh, you know harmonics that you can create. However, because of physical limitations of the string, physical limitations of uh, the uh, human ear apparatus and so on usually going above uh, 16 you know uh, equal uh, pieces if you if you will uh, proves itself to be imperceptible you can no longer hear jackson actually to, to put it simply uh, both in terms of uh, pitch and also in terms of volume so what I wanted to show you, first of all, is that all harmonics are, in essence, the same. Why? Because let's say you have a natural harmonic. Natural harmonic, obviously, means gently tapping above the string uh, while, uh, you know, uh, giving your string an initial attack with the pick. However, when you are playing, for example, pitch, uh, pinch harmonics, not pitch, they all have pitch. Uh, pinch harmonic. You're basically doing the same thing. It's just that it's happening, A, very rapidly. The succession is, uh, you know, one, two, because you're initially uh, giving the string its impulse using the pick, and immediately afterwards, you're gently touching it with your thumb. So, first of all, it's happening very fast in succession, and Second of all, instead of using your left hand for 
uh, giving the uh, the string its split by tapping it somewhere along uh, its uh, node points as seen in uh, this image right here on the screen. Uh, instead of doing that with your left hand, you're basically doing that with your right hand. And to make things even uh, more complex, uh, when you're not dealing with open strings alone and you're dealing with uh, already fretted notes, which again, effectively, uh, these things are shortening the length of your uh, string because nothing past your uh, your finger uh, towards the nut, uh, nothing past that point uh, counts with respect to the string vib uh, string's vibration. Uh, people now say, ah, well, you know, if you're uh, if you're now taking into account the fact that this is your new string length, uh, now obviously your uh, note points change because what was once, uh, for example, uh, let's take a, a, again an easy one, the 12th fret, once was, uh, what was once the half of it, the whole string, which is the 12th fret, now, for example, when you are, uh, I don't know, fretting the uh, fifth string, now obviously, since your, uh, since this end of the string moves from the nut to the, uh, to the fifth fret, now obviously your, uh, your string's half will also move further down the line, right? So, uh, yeah, that's something that, again, confuses people. And also, uh, there are the, the so-called, you know, tapped harmonics when uh, you're actually uh, kind of like both uh, giving the string its impulse and also... Uh, it's slight tap in order to create the harmonic using the same finger by actually banging the string against uh, against the fret. Right, so it's a uh, so yeah. You also have those, and people tend to catalog them just based on the way that they're executed with the hands and so on and so forth but in in uh, in real life like from a physical standpoint they're all the same harmonic uh, type whether it's natural or tap or pinched or whatever so with that out of the way what I really wanted to let you guys know is the fact that whenever you are dividing the string um, into equal parts depending on how many of those parts you have you will have different intervals created inside the harmonic uh, itself so in other words for example when you're splitting something into uh, a multiple of two whether it's two four eight sixteen so on you're actually doubling the frequency so if you know anything about music theory when you're doubling the frequency of any note you're basically going up one octave then one octave then one octave so when you're doubling it it's one octave higher you double that which is uh, you know the original one times four uh, you have two octaves uh, higher you double it again which is the original one times eight you now have third uh, third octave and so on. So with that thing, it's quite easy to get uh, deceived into thinking that uh, whenever I'm playing uh, and I'm uh, I'm creating a harmonic on my guitar, it's going to fit within whatever key I'm in, just because it's uh, you know whatever octaves higher. Well, again, that only happens when you're dividing your string within. Uh, parts that are multiples of two. If you're dividing it into any other parts, uh, any other number of parts, for example, uh, three parts, uh, five parts, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, actually not uh, eight, uh, because of what I just said earlier, but any other uh, thing which is not a multiple of two, 
you will get different things. You will no longer get octaves, which are, you know, basically um, the same, the same tonic, the same root note as as the the string you're 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 playing against. But now you will have things like uh, I don't know major thirds. You will have uh, I don't know perfect fifths. You'll have minor sevens. You'll have major seconds, and a lot of uh, weird things happening, right? So, uh, for this reason, I'll do the following. Now, I will show you just for a practical, uh, from a practical standpoint, which are some of the most common note points on the guitar and what their relationship is with the open string that you uh, you would normally play against. Because this is like uh, the bread and butter of uh, most harmonic based effects when playing blues, rock, metal, especially any, any sort of, uh, you know, modern type uh, music. So, let me first show you that and then continue further on uh, with information on why this is not the complete set of things, right? So uh, bear with me just for a second, if you will. I know this lesson is all over the place, but unfortunately it can be structured in a very, uh, you know, it, it can be structured in a great fashion because of the nature of having to explain multiple concepts and things like that for every little subject that you touch upon, right? So, going straight into what I just said, like I haven't done this already like 10 times, the first and most important thing is the 12th fret. So, when you have your 12th fret being slightly tapped while banging against the open string, so this is the open string, now you have an octave. Why? Because again, 12th fret divides your string in two, so now you have one octave higher of the same freaking uh, note. In our case, the G note. Why? Because we're banging against the open G string, as funny as it may sound. Now, first let's go to the left of the 12th fret. Uh, one of like the one of the best sounding uh, harmonics after the 12th fret would be uh, when you go on the fifth fret. Why? Because this actually does the same thing. If you take, so when you were at the 12th fret, you divided the whole string in half. Now if you just take a look at one half, and my hand is huge, but not that huge in order to cover like the whole thing, but you understand what I'm saying, like from here uh, to here. So when you take this half of the, um, of the string, now if you further divide it in half, you'll be exactly at the 5th fret. So Actually, this is half of a half, which means in terms of pitch, you're doubling the already doubled pitch. So now you have again the tonic, it's again a G note, but this time it's not one octave higher, it's two octaves higher, right? So, so you have G, G with one octave higher, G with two octaves higher. So. Even if you know nothing about theory, your ear at least will help you understand that it's basically uh, the same note, right? So the fifth is a very uh, good uh, place, the fifth fret. Why? Because again, if you know that G should be inside your key or whatever you're, you're playing, if G sounds good, then the twelfth will sound good and the fifth will sound good. Now, let's go into something a bit more uh, interesting, let's say. Uh, let's say you are going into the 7th fret. Now, the 7th fret 
maybe you already know, maybe you don't, but the seventh fret also creates a very pleasant sound. Now, why is this? This is because, again, it's not a very disturbing uh, sound compared to the, the root note, in our case, G. Uh, but this time around, it's not G anymore. It's a perfect fifth. So what happens is that when you are playing, when, when you are uh, tapping the harmonic above your seventh fret, instead of having a G, now you have a drum rolls, please. D. Right, so uh, why is this? Well, if you know anything about uh, power chords or whatever, uh, if this is your G, then if you're playing a power chord, this would be the fifth because power chords are uh, dyadic quote unquote chords, although they're not chords, but anyway. Um, you're going from D to, from, sorry, from G to D. Right, so the fifth of G is D. Now, that's what's happening on the seventh fret. Pay attention, because already you have something different than your uh, tonic. So if you're playing something, you have to make sure that if G fits, also it's fifth uh, will fit. Which is true for most uh, most uh, you know scales and whatnot, but just uh, to throw it out there. Now, another very uh, interesting fret position would be the ninth. Well, it's not actually the ninth; it's actually eight point eight something like that, uh, which roughly translated means from the ninth fret just go slightly lower by like point two of a fret whatever visual approximation you can uh, you can have of that so um, yeah if this is your ninth fret just go either right on the ninth fret and just try it or just a little bit to the left if uh, it sounds that it's still not super uh, pure you know so this is what's happening on the ninth fret on the ninth fret you have a major third now a major third when it comes to um, you know playing it against the G, well, I don't know. Let's see. If again you know anything about uh, chords in general, if this is G, this is its major third. So uh, yeah, usually uh, when you go here. Uh, that would be a B, right? So in this case, again, uh, above the ninth fret, you have a major third. So make sure that if you're playing something and you want to tap that uh, harmonic, make sure that the major third uh, fits. In other words, uh, make sure that you are in a uh, major key relative to G, for example, G major, uh, or some other modes or scales, uh, you know, keys whatever that have a major third if you have a minor third bad luck it will definitely not sound good uh okay so that was uh what it was fret uh 12 5 7 9 which is actually 8.8 .8. and yeah if you'll uh just excuse me i think i will sneeze Come on, there we go. Any moment now. Nope, oh, it went away. So, yeah, uh, we covered these frets, but there are still a lot more frets ha -ha, to cover. So, um, yeah, let's go into the next interesting one, which is normally the fourth fret, but it's actually something like, I don't know, 3.9, something like that. Uh, so, here again, just slightly to the left of the 4th uh, fret, we have this bad boy. Uh, this bad boy, since it's uh, above the uh, almost, let's say, 4th uh, fret, 
Uh, this means that it's a uh, perfect fifth again. Perfect fifth, where did we have it before? Fret seven. Again, the only thing that sets them apart is that at fret seven, you have the perfect fifth plus one octave, while above uh, fret four, well, 3.9, you have, uh, again, the perfect fifth, but this time around two octaves higher, right? So, yeah, just keep that in mind. And also when uh, we went to uh, the ninth fret, which is actually the uh, 8.8 .8 fret, uh, this thing right here, it's actually with, uh, not only is it with a major third, but it's actually two octaves higher. Yeah, just because I forgot to uh, mention this. So, um, yeah, going further down the line, now you have uh, some other uh, cool positions like uh, the 2.7, 2.3, uh, two 1.8 uh, positions. These are really hard to to get if you're not paying attention. But just one more mention uh, here, which is actually super important. Usually harmonics depend heavily not only on the uh, bridge uh, position for your pickup, but they also depend heavily on how fresh your strings are so that when you start chopping it down into smaller and smaller, uh, you know, pieces uh, in terms of the vibration pattern, of course, uh, it can respond to that clearly. So what I did for this video, I purposely took uh, this guitar instead of a brand new uh, set of strings uh, on some of my other guitars or whatever. I wanted to have this guitar with this set of strings, which is quite old. It's not super old. I mean, it's not the oldest that I've ever played, but it's uh, definitely uh, approaching its uh, limit. So it's on that far end of the spectrum. And I wanted to show you just how frustrating it can be sometimes to catch these harmonics. So if you're struggling with, uh, with harmonics in general and you have the uh, the habit of playing your set of strings for weeks and months and you know years well i'm sorry to say you won't get the best results so again now that we've covered uh the 12th the 9th the 5th the 7th the 4th whatever now when we're uh, starting to go around the uh three point something uh, uh or two point something or one point something uh fret positions is going to get super hard. So at this point, uh, I just want to show you that you have something at uh, 2.7, uh, 2 point, uh, sorry, the, this is a uh, third. So 2.7 uh, should be one more than 2.3, then uh, exactly two, and then something like 1.8 and so on. You can go further down the line, but again, it's gonna get extremely heavy. So just for a beginning, just start and experiment by playing around with, uh, with uh, you know, this area right here. So. This one at 1.8, it's already super hard to, to get it clean on this particular set of strings. You can hear it uh, starting to ring, but it's uh, a bit, you know, mixed with uh, other harmonics from the actual open string. And it's not that clear and, yeah, not that clear and defined as the other ones. So just, uh, you know, start playing with... So 2.7, 2 2.3, 2.8. That was the best one so far. Okay, so um, how is this thing 
actually going? Well, let me first cover the upper half of the 12th fret, and then I'll show you. So, after the uh, 12th fret, which again is one octave higher because you're just splitting the, uh, the string in half, although on this guitar I have only 22 frets, when it comes to harmonics, it doesn't matter because uh, you don't need the frets. The frets are just references. Uh, you, you're not pressing against them. So, uh, at the 24th fret, you would actually do exactly what you did when you went from the 12th to the 5th. You double it again because you're splitting it in half again. So you will get the same with. Right? So that's where my 24th fret would be if I would have one. Um, just, you know, visual approximation. And it's working as you can see. Uh, Again, when you're uh, playing pinch harmonics, you're basically doing the same thing as, for example, playing the string and touching it here with your left hand. And so on. But it's not done with the left hand, it's done with the, the right hand as well, with the thumb, right? So. And. I'm actually doing this a, a little bit on purpose. It's it's the same rule that applies. In some spots you will get them, and in some spots you won't. Why? Because you have to, uh, you know, sort of uh, slice the string in integer multiples. You can't have you know the string be uh, divided within like uh, four point uh, two uh, pieces. Do not confuse it with the. Uh, point something fret positions that's just because the distance when you're splitting it in multiple inter integers the actual uh, piece of string does not perfectly line up with one of the frets and that's why we have uh, these unconventional uh, fret positions which are something like 8.8 .8 or 3.9 or whatever but when it comes to the actual string itself it's uh, split within uh, in multiple, you know, in integer uh, multiples, uh, which makes the same thing happen for pinch harmonics. You have to nail those spots, otherwise, you go from having them to not having them. Right, so, uh, yeah. The 24th fret is one of the first ones that's of uh, major interest to you. And uh, obviously, again, it's G because it's, uh, it's a tonic, it's unison, it's your root note uh, just two octaves higher. Uh, what else do we have? Well, uh, we have the, uh, what, the ninth, uh, 19th? Yeah, the 19th position. Which acts exactly as the seventh uh, fret, which is uh, basically the uh, perfect fifth, just one octave higher. Uh, what else? We have kind of like, so kind of like the 16th fret, but it's actually 15.8, something like this, so 15.9 uh, actually, uh, just slightly to the left. This is the major third, just two octaves higher. And yeah, again, I want to first uh, put right now on the screen a table that I did for you. Uh, actually, it's a table that I did many, many, many years ago when I was uh, still, you know, giving some uh, lessons here and there uh, and I had a few students but um, yeah I had this table with the most uh, accessible if you will harmonics on your guitar but here's the deal like I said in the very beginning and now probably it'll make more sense as long as you divide your string in multiple and not just multiple but integer multiples uh, so as long as you divide your string in these integer multiples, like uh, two uh, pieces, three pieces, 
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, whatever, but not something like 8.5, 7.3, you get the point. No floating numbers. Um, as long as you do this, you can, in theory, go up to infinity. However, because your strings, which are made out of metal, and they are under this type of tension with this sort of gauge uh, made out of these materials and so on uh, they cannot be equally uh, divided to infinity you cannot have like a million parts uh, you know with a million octaves above or uh, whatever it's just not feasible so because of certain limitations of your instrument it's not practical to go above 16 so once you start dividing it uh, the string I mean once you start dividing the uh, the string into more than 16 equal parts you no longer uh, get anything perceptible it starts to become imperceptible why because again uh, volume wise you only have a certain uh, amount of mass vibrating so it's going to be super low in terms of volume and also in terms of pitch um, it's already going into like dog territory and yeah also you'll stop being able to form them properly on your uh, physical string because this is not just a theoretical string somewhere on a you know physics paper um, or article or whatever so from this point uh, of view, I will put right now on the screen uh, my table. So this is the table with obviously not all 16, uh, I mean not, not all 16, not with all of the harmonics that go up till the 16th. Um, so these are the most important ones that I was also teaching uh, my students and they're like the most you'll ever need for any practical application. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, you definitely, definitely don't need anything uh, more than these, but if you're a maniac and you really want to know all of them theoretically, here is uh, like from, uh, you know, a grab from uh, Wikipedia where you see uh, a bunch more and uh, yeah here's another one uh, which shows actually all of them up until the very uh, last perceptible one which is the the one that I just talked about the the 16 uh, divisions one uh, all of them are linked down below uh, because I need to give credits where credits are due um, yeah especially uh, you know apart from the, the Wikipedia article uh, this other guy uh, let me just uh, make sure I'm not mispronouncing his name Dennis Warren um, Dennis Warren did a great job of collecting and uh, you know deducing all of them and putting them into one very cool article and one cool table so you have the links in the, the uh, description make sure you check them out and yeah uh, I basically encourage you to pause the video and make screenshots of everything uh, that I've uh, shown you in terms of tables or you know with the exception of mine uh, for the other uh, to just go to the original links and again do not be confused about the multiple types of harmonics that people say uh, they exist it's just the same natural occurring phenomenon you give the energy impulse into the string so that it starts to vibrate and then you virtually cut it into uh, integer uh, number of pieces in uh, in terms of how the uh, the um, uh, wavelength uh, is viewed on whatever an oscilloscope or uh, any other uh, tool like that so uh, 
yeah, it's only one type of creating. Uh, it's only there's only one type of uh, harmonics involved. Don't get confused. And also with the uh, the thing where I told you that you know if you're no longer playing open strings and you're fretting a note, it's again still the same thing. It's just that now you have a shorter uh, string, so now you have to kind of deduce where uh, where the half is, where the third is where the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, seventh pieces, and so on and so forth, right? So, yeah, one more thing that I want to add about uh, this thing that I did many, many years ago for uh, my students. I'll extend it, because actually I have the, uh, I have the extended version, but I just gave you the simplified version at first, but now I'll give you the full version of it, and what the other things inside this table uh, do is obviously they show you the respective notes. So when we're saying that we have uh, the major third uh, for uh, you know the G string, or when you have the perfect fifth for the D string, or the uh, minor seventh for the uh, A string, and so on, I'm actually showing you what those notes are. And why am I doing this? Because uh, it's interesting to see uh, whether or not certain harmonics on certain frets on whatever uh, string you might choose, it's interesting to see if uh, they will fit within the given key that you're currently playing in or not. Because this will save you a lot of hassle and you have to have this in mind. You cannot just, you know, you cannot just be uh, playing something in, I don't know, in uh, F minor. Uh, and start playing with, with all of these um, harmonics. Why? Because they will not work. Not all of them will work. Uh, because they perfectly fit around the the you know the intervals that I told you and you have them in uh, in the table uh, that I gave you they fit around the the G note whether it's G or it's perfect fifth or major second major uh, third minor seventh and you know stuff like that not all of those things will fit within F minor in our example or I don't know C sharp major or who knows uh, right so again make sure that when you play with harmonics you don't just do it randomly or if you want to do it randomly and you want as many of them to fit uh, so that you don't have to you know uh, spend a lot of time thinking what goes and what doesn't just choose the uh, key so that it fits around the harmonics. Do it the other way around, right? So, for example, choose very simple things like E minor or, uh, you know, stuff like that. So, again, use my table and figure out the keys that uh, you should play in just for a particular song. Don't make this a habit. Uh, but, uh, yeah, try to reverse engineer the whole, uh, the whole process and uh, kind of like, uh, you know, find out, figure out what keys you should be playing in if you just want to randomly uh, play with all the harmonics on one string or let's say all of the strings uh, across one fret, like the fifth fret or whatever. Uh, so, yeah. That's pretty much it. It's a super long lesson, but again, uh, sorry, I can't do it any shorter, and I can't do it any uh, more civilized, if you will, because there's a lot of things that there are a lot of things that I have to uh, be explaining, and I have to jump from one to another. And it's like you know, when you start researching something, you go on Wikipedia, then you go to a reference, you open a new tab, then you see a YouTube video, and then you have an article, then you have a white paper, and you end up with like 20 tabs uh, going down the rabbit hole. So, yeah, that's why I told you 
visit those two links for those two uh, comprehensive tables that I showed you. But just for information purpose, my advice is stick to the one that I've showed you, that I've shown you, because uh, again, it gives you like a limited functional subset of all of those, uh, you know, crazy ones out there, and it's uh, serving the the purpose for for everything that you'll ever need in terms of playing the guitar. So yeah, with that being said, until next time. Let me know how much you hate me. So, yeah. Bye-bye.